Welcome to the Financial Flossing Podcast with Ross Brannan, guiding dental professionals to a brighter future. Ross Brannan is a financial advisor who knows it's not just about your teeth. He helps dental practice owners protect and maximize today's cash flow to plan for tomorrow's cash needs. Find him at rossbrannan.com. On the show, he brings together experts to help dental professionals looking to make smart money decisions to grow their income, turn their retirement goals into reality, and improve their lives. And now, here's your host, Ross Brannan. Welcome to the show. My guest today is Eric Vickery. Eric began managing his first dental practice in 1998 and in 2001 began coaching and consulting for dental practices. He has consulted for over 250 dental offices to help them grow their practice and is dedicated to helping offices and teams grow and achieve their goals. He is now the VP of coaching of All Star Dental Academy and you may remember a few weeks ago, we had Alex Nottingham of All-Star Dental Academy. So through my conversation with Alex, he said, you should talk to Eric. And here we are today. Eric, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for having me, Ross. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. So 250 dental practices is a nice resume. Kind of give me your background, your story. Yeah. So after graduating with a business degree, my wife and I decided to move from California all the way to Maine. And I, where she's from, and I said, well, what am I going to do there? And, and she said, hey, my dad's a dentist. Go work for him. And uh, he and was you're excited. you're not a dentist. So she basically said, go That's sit right. work the front desk. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to, you know, I'm entrepreneurial and I wanted to learn how to run a business. And so I was more interested in the back side of it, QuickBooks and payroll and how you run a business, how you start it. And I ended up going, you know, through a coaching seminar myself and uh, fell in love with dentistry through just the art of, of coaching and, and case acceptance and verbal skills. And that was in, uh, that was in 1998, started coaching in 2001 and probably coached in the neighborhood of 300 or more offices during that time and just learn from them. You know, I pick up something and give it away. That's, that's coaching. Yeah. That's really interesting. And so one of the things that, you know, you're known for a little bit, at least at, at all star is the fee for service, that world and how to take someone from, insurance to fee for service. And I know there's different levels of that, but would you yeah. say that's your specialty now? So it's really hard because there's probably five or six pillars that we, you know, all star is known for and what we do. And it really starts with relationship. And I think what it ultimately can lead to is being independent of restrictive insurance. I'll say it that way. And so in 2001, I helped my father-in-law resign from Delta Dental. We weren't in network with anything else. And it just really started to give me a knack for helping offices understand not only how to do that, but what were the insulators that you had to have in place in order to make that leap, whether it was belief in yourself, <laughs> having a good team, being able to have the right verbal skills with case acceptance, have awesome systems when it came to scheduling. And so putting in our tracker, our KPI tracker helped us be able to evaluate practices so we'll take a practice that just starts with us and says, hey, we want to improve in new patient flow, preventing cancellations and case acceptance. And so we take them through that and they're using our KPI tracker at All Star. And basically what we start to see is, wow, look at your write-offs. You're getting 60 cents on the dollar and just starts to open the eyes. And then we take them to a PPO write-off calculator. We show them what that cost is for each plan and we show them how to understand what the other side can look like and ask them if that's part of their vision. Yeah, that's really exciting because, you know, as you and I were talking about offline, in the physician community, many times the medical career is, is described as the career of diminishing returns because as Medicare reduces reimbursements, which they always do, then United Healthcare, Cigna, Blue Cross, they all follow suit. And so yeah. the doctor is getting paid less for the same procedure. Right. Uh, while, you know, the cost of living goes up every year. So, it can be very challenging. The same thing happens with dental insurance. You know, I, I have an example, like I just went and had my cleaning a month ago and I had to pay $40. Well, I used to only have to pay $8. And I said, did you guys have a, a fee increase? I said, yeah, we did back in October, which I don't blame them for increasing their fees. Yeah. But my insurance isn't going to increase their payout. They're and decreasing. So, 
So I had to, instead of paying $8, I had to pay like $35 or $40, which to me wasn't a big deal. I like my dentist. I wouldn't leave over that. But if you're not building your practice where the cost is the cost, regardless of what the insurance pays, that can create some challenges. Absolutely. Yeah, two things. (laughs) One is I've never helped more offices resign from restrictive insurance in a single year than I did in 2021 because inflation was skyrocketing while insurance PPO contracts were decreasing. Clients were getting letters from all of the insurance saying, hey, we're going to be reducing your rates. They have this contract with you that's non-negotiable, means you can't increase the fee, but there's nothing about them being, says they can't decrease the fee. So if you think, oh, this fee is really great when you sign up for it and get into it, be prepared for it to, to go down. It will be decreased at some point. Once they have enough leverage with patients in your practice, they're going to go, okay, Dr. Smith is going to be afraid now to resign from insurance. Okay. So I've never helped more. And with inflation, people are wanting to get out of it. And the second thing is, you have to have the ability to understand this relationship. And I liken it to a movie where, you know, he, he or she, I don't know, male or female person falls in love with, you know, let's say she falls in love with this guy because he has a lot of money or vice versa. He falls in love with this girl because she has a lot of money or falls in love, right? Just tricks her into being married because she has a lot of money. We've seen this movie and your hope is, oh my gosh, can't they just really fall in love? And then the money goes away. She loses all the money. Now the question in the movie is, is she going to still be married to her? Is she going to leave her now that all the money's gone? That same thing happens in this relationship. Did your patient come to you because it's cheap or did they come to you? Do you really want them? It works kind of both ways. It works. (laughs) What are you doing to develop relationship with your patients? What's the rapport building you do? How are you interested? Not interesting. How are you showing value and, and credibility and all these things? So these are the insulators that we work on with the practice before we'll ever help someone resign from insurance. And I think what happens is I tell offices, do your patients really love you? They love being around you. Do they love coming into your office. Do they really appreciate you and value what you do? And do you do the same for them? Because then the marriage will last beyond the money. And I, you mentioned the levels. I want to, I keep saying resign from restrictive insurance. That doesn't mean the insurance check isn't coming to your office. I, I think the funny thing is that the four levels of participation, let's say HMO, DMO, right? You're going to have a very, very low reimbursement rate. Then there's PPO in network. And I think a lot of dentists think they need to fall into that category in order for the check to come to them, the assignment of benefits, for the patient to have as low of a copay or nothing at all for preventive services. The third level is out of network, but the insurance check still comes to your practice. And I think that's where we really succeed in dentistry is right there at that level. And then the fourth level will be fee for service. You pay me a hundred percent of value. I file your claim and your, your insurance reimburses you directly. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Go ahead. Well, and, and I think going from that level two to level three is really what we help offices. And, and I think that the aha moment when I show offices, okay, so you're having XYZ insurance company give you 60 cents on the dollar for a profi. Let's say a profi is a hundred dollars. We'll do easy math there. I know you're a financial guy, but a uh, hundred dollars for a cleaning, right? And you're getting $60, you're writing off $40. When your overhead is 70%, 73%, you're paying the patient 13% to come into the practice. Here, and let me give you $13. Most people don't do the math to realize they that. They don't want to face that. They don't want to face the music. But how but many here's, people, go ahead, no, go ahead. Well, so here's the funny thing. When you're out of network and the insurance check comes to you, that same insurance company, 95% of the time, will just pay the $100. So you go, why am I in network? Why am I writing off $40? The patient still pays nothing but you're just out of network and offices don't understand how to do that. And that's what we help them in that realization. How many dentists, when they hear fee for service, they think there's no insurance involved whatsoever. They think it's like, Oh, I'm, di- I'm strictly moving to cosmetic dentistry. They, they don't think it's, you know, d- yeah. you know, the basics of dentistry. Yeah. And that's why I want to really separate those categories because you can be out of network fee for service, meaning I'm charging everybody the same rate and the insurance checks coming to me asterisk with Delta in, I don't know, half the states, the check's not going to come to you. So we leave Delta for last. And then we deal with all the other insurances. Then we show you how to deal with Delta where the patient will pay you and Delta will reimburse them directly. And that's doable too. It's just how you do it, how you set yourself up for success in in that process. But you got to have the insulators in place first with relationship and rapport and case acceptance and understanding profitability and your team's got to be on board. So most of the time I get dentists coming to me out of frustration and anger because they're losing money at the end of the month. They don't have enough money to to make ends meet. 
And now team members are asking for a raise. So they come to me out of frustration. And I want them to understand it doesn't have to be a frustrating experience to transition to out of network or fee for service. So it really takes a realization that they're kind of getting the raw end of the deal, or it takes some financial pain for them to wake up and realize, why am I doing this? Because what everyone is already doing, because everyone's doing just kind of what everyone does. They're following the herd, if you will. And the the insurance companies want them to follow the herd. Yeah. Delta does this thing where uh, prior to 2012, I have a client that I worked with, just started working with her last year. And in 1998, she signed up for Premier and PPO Delta because Delta told her you got to have access to all the patients. Well, hundred dollars for office fee, right? Okay. And then Premier rate would be like $85. Then PPO would be the $60. Well, she's thinking, all right, well, I'm going to get 85 or 60, 85 or 60. Well, what happens is once you assign PPO to your name and Delta, you're getting $60 for everybody. 5% of the Delta plans are premier only that 85% rate. So 95% of the time she was getting $60 for 14 years before, no, gosh, 20 plus years, you know, before I got to her and said, get out of that PPO part and just be premier. Now you're getting 85 cents on a dollar from Delta instead of 60 cents. And it's just this, they trick you. They, they want you to think that's the right way to do things. And, you know, right there, $60,000 in the practice and in one conversation that we coached her on. So (laughs) I'm not an insurance company or big, bad, evil, always trying to get you guys. But the more you hear about like health insurance and dental insurance, it's kind of hard not to think that sometimes. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, that's why they have the biggest buildings in every city. They're out to make money. They're not out for better patient care. And I don't know what the statistics are on, you know, being it's, out of network. It's not really insurance by definition, by the way. Oh yeah. No, it's especially Delta. It, well, it can't be insurance when there's a $1,500 limit, you know, insurance, if you think about medical has got these astronomical limits that save your life. You know, this is, you're talking about one tooth and Delta isn't even an insurance company. So that's how they can break the rules. So until your state, so for example, I won't name the state, but what happened was they were trying to pass this law that's in that's in a lot of states now where the check has to come from Delta to the practice if it's requested, right? That's happening. But this one state, you know, all of a sudden, you know, House versus Senate of that state, House passes it, let's say, yeah, we want the check to be able to go to the dental office as requested, sits on the insurance commissioner's office for too long, and now the Senate can't vote on it. Interesting that that bill just sits there. I think there's a little money involved from Delta into it. You know, and patients go, oh, you're making it about the money, Dr. Smith. You're making it about the money. No, Delta's making it about the money. Well, it is a business, by the way. And we, <laughs> we're trying to take care of people. How can we care for people in a quality way when insurance continues to say, no, go the cheapest route? Well, and you're, they're trying to basically, you know, crush you from a financial standpoint. So, yes. All right. So if we have, you know, there's like 250,000 dentists, who knows what the number is, but let's say if we have a, if we have 10 dentists here, how many of them are in tier three or four of your resigning insurance? Personally, my clients, or well, do you just, think just you nationally? Guess in, nationally? I'd say half. I'd say half. Yeah. Oh, you think that many? I think so. Maybe 40% to 50%. I mean, it's funny. You use the 80, 20 principle, right? Right. Right. So If you think about it, we work with a lot of offices that are already wanting to do it that way or wanting the help to get it to that way. And what we see time and time again is that production at a million dollars, okay, but collections at 600,000 or or let's call it 800,000, right? 20% 20 write off for because half their practice insurance, half is not. So all we see is it's when we resign from insurances, still producing a million dollars, now collecting a million dollars. That's all we see. And, and, and here's, here's the math for you. This is the important part. When we take them through our trackers, okay, we help them understand the population of their practice that is in network. So let's use it, ABC Insurance Company, okay? And 20% of your practice is that insurance company, okay? That's a big number. Delta is usually 45, 50% of a practice, okay? Wow. So 20% is with ABC, I then show them the write-off calculator and I say, all right, your write-off rate for ABC insurance company is 40%, okay? That means you could afford to lose 40% of those patients that come in to see you, 20% of your practice, and the 60% who stay are going to pay 40% more. It's simple math. And here's the important statistic. We typically lose 10 maybe 15% of those patients maximum. So the numbers are even better. 
it's even better. So they're not working harder. They're just working smarter. And they're just out of network. Insurance check comes to them. Insurance pays for the whole hygiene visit. I should put an asterisk on that. The last year, we've seen reimbursement rates go down for in-network, for out-of-network, whatever it is. But we explained to the patient, it's, it's just like going to the physician, you have a $20 copay. Like you said, right, $40 going to, going to the dentist now. It's a slight change to maintain that quality. It's a lot of times it's easier to stay with your dentist than it is to switch insurances or switch dental offices. You know, stick with your dental, dental office you have, switch dental insurances, maybe you have another option. We do that all the time with federal plans. So I could go so, on and on about it, Ross. So how much of this is a mindset shift yeah. because you know yeah. in my experience most things in life when you start going against the grain being yeah. contrarian you it really challenges people's mindsets and you gotta almost have to kind of get comfortable being uncomfortable and some people just have a really good business model of being ppo if you have enough money left in the month it means you're operating that correctly great keep doing that i have clients probably 20 percent of my clients are have ppo involvement and, and I would say at a big level, I would say more than that have, because they have Delta in their practice because they're Delta Premier. So maybe half of my clients well, have Delta with them, right? And I've got some clients who are only Medicaid for their 80% Medicaid. So obviously okay, you, that's not, that, that's a different. You, you have to figure out how to do that math and make that work. But I think what we have to recognize from our standpoint is it's not my vision, it's your vision, but I'm going to help you get there based upon what it is you want to accomplish. The mindset, Walter Haley taught me this in 1998, right? He said, you know, you got to be a 10. You got to have confidence. You got to believe in yourself. And if you don't, your patients are picking up on that. When you're wavering in your belief, whether it's case presentation or whether it's resigning from insurance and having this conversation with patients, they're going to pick up on it. And they're not going to really have trust in you. They're not, you're not going to have credibility. It's, the analogy is the, the heart surgeon with shaky hands. You know, when your voice is quivering or your confidence is shaken, your patient picks up on that and it affects how much dentistry they do with you, how your ability to get them healthy. And it also affects your ability to lead a team. It affects your ability to get people on board with your vision for this. So that's why it's not just, hey, let's help you resign from insurance. Those pillars I was talking about, we have these, these very important pillars, whether it's being confident in who you are, uh, whether it's having a, a well-trained team. It's communication skills, case acceptance, it's marketing, and then it's insurance. And we have to have these pillars or what I call insulators set up, ideal day scheduling, overdue hygiene, all the things well, the we The reality work on. is, if I come to you as a dentist and say, Eric, I got to go fee for service. I can't stand insurance anymore. You're like, great, that's good. But we got to take four steps before we get to that. Absolutely. The I would evaluate first. them. That's right. Yeah. We would practice evaluate it. We have a KPI tracker that I've, I created in 2001 and my father-in-law, it's like in my basement, I created this Excel tracker <laughs> and we use it with all of our clients and it's adapted over the last 20 plus years. And then we, once we do that, we have a good understanding of how you're performing. Then we go into PPO trackers and look at patient population for every single plan you have. And then we look at the cost of each one of those plans. You might have a plan that has hundred patients in it with a 10% write-off rate. And you go, I'm okay with that. That's fine right. with me. Maybe at some point you won't be because they lower reimbursement, but we do an evaluation. We help you fix those numbers on the tracker, whether it's perio percentage, uh, scheduling to goal, production per patient, production per hour, collections, all of those things. They come through verbal skills and systems training that we do at All-Star. So it's one of those things that you have to have all the insulators in place before you can run this risk. And it is a risk. There is no great opportunity at the other end of anything unless there's risk in the middle. There's no great opportunity without risk, right? So how long does it take to make the transition? Six so, months. So yeah. six months. You answered that right away. It's like, boom. Yeah. Because we work in dentistry, we work in six months. You go to the dentist how often? Every six months. So I need to talk to you chair side and have this conversation with you one-on-one -on -one where I say, Ross, here's what's going on. And I just, have, I just have a simple verbal skill that we teach offices how to do. I'm happy to go over it with you here. And I, I have this conversation. Now, while we're doing that, having that conversation with everybody, I've already checked all the boxes and all the insulators though. So it could be longer than six months, could be nine months, could be 12 months. It just depends. And we never resign all of your insurances at the same time. Yeah, that might not go well. 
That's right. So we take up, that's why the population tracker is really important to figure out, okay, with Aetna, you've got 5%. With Signa, you've got 5%. And with MetLife, you got 5%. That 15%, we're going to chunk that up. We're going to print the patient list of that. And we're going to checkbox every single conversation. We're going to document in their chart that we had the conversation so they can never come back to you and say, what are you talking about? You guys never told me this. We lay it out for them. So there's a whole system to this. We make it, it's not, it's not simple, but it's also not difficult to do. That's what I've never had a client. I've probably helped, I don't know, 50 offices resign from insurance. What's the saying? 73% of all statistics are made up on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know, 50 offices or so resigned from insurance. Never had one of them go back on. Not a single. Wow. One. Not a single. Wow. One. Because what happens is you see on the other side, the reimbursement rate so much higher. You don't need all those patients to make the same amount of money to support your practice. So do you see typically after that someone resigns insurance that they are seeing less patients, but making the same money and there's, there's some more quality of life? Or do you see people or do you see people making more money and still hitting the same volume? Mm -hmm. And so making more money total or there's yeah. some combination of the two? A combination of three, actually. They leave and they come back or new patients fill the void. So I'll tell you a story. So I helped a client resign from Delta. It was the only thing they were participating with in 2015. This is the Bay Area, California. And when you resign from Delta, the patient now has to pay all of that up front at the office and then Delta pays a check back to the patient in this scenario. It does, it does sound like when you start your practice, signing up with Delta is like making a deal with the devil. It's, yeah, it's a whole nother conversation for me to have and they, may, they might be listening ross so <laughs> <laughs> i'm not uh, trying to rip any many companies just based on the experiences it's it's, a, it's a very very difficult contract so what happened was we probably lost 60 or 70 percent of delta patients over a time for about two or three years right however they never they never declined in the dollars collected now keep in mind this is a three million dollar practice a year wait so okay? you're saying you're saying okay so they lost 60% of their Delta patients and didn't lose a dollar. So 40% of Delta patients paying full price. But here's what happened. They filled those voids. They're like, well, you know, all of our new patients are Delta. Well, what happened was just other types of insured patients called or cash pay patients called and filled the void. You know, what you're looking for is looking for you, as Walter said. So the now fast forward last year, this same practice is collecting more than they ever have before. And I looked at their numbers, 60% of their new patients in any given month are Delta patients because those patients don't know any different that they weren't there in the change. They're like, Oh, I pay you and the insurance reimbursed me. Okay. Because we explain it so well, we have a confident way of communicating that to the patient. So they're seeing more new patients than ever now that are quality new patients. Imagine your Delta patients paying you happily. That's just how we explain it. And because they're not marrying you for the money because you have a great name, because people are referring you, we have a referral system in place, you know, all the things they roll out the red carpet for their patient. They're not a clinic. They're not a run of the mill, run them through what's your name, switching doctors every month type place. They have a relationship and rapport with their patients and their patients love that. They feel safe and feel like they can trust them. So That's it's a part critical of what like, to make this transition, this resignation, if you will. Yeah. I mean, you can't be an assembly line. You need to have relationships with your patients, good chair side manner. That's right. If you're just a mill, that's right. Where you have a new associate every six months and, you know, it's yeah. not going to work. There's going to have to be some insulators in place that you check the boxes and go, okay, yeah, we do that. We have a retention rate. We have pre-appointment for hygiene. We have a 5% or less uh, cancellation rate, you know, on all the things that we put in place. And our tracker will show us what that is. Even perio is important. So that practice just sold. That was a transition to an associate. The senior doctor who I helped resign from insurance retired. And not a blip on the screen. It's it's better than ever. We did a fee increase in January. And here's an important statistic to understand. The cost of doing business in dentistry went up from 2010 to 2020, about 18% increase in cost for you to do business. So if you didn't raise your fees over those 10 years, that equivalent, you're obviously on the decline. But since 2020, you can imagine it wasn't just a 2% increase a year. 
Inflation was what last year, Ross? Well, it's currently eight and a half percent as of so, like last week. And that's an average. That's taking gas increase and, and bread we're increase. We're not talking and about all the PPP or the PPE. That yes, Dennis expenses that get. we had to do. Yeah, yeah and so. the cost. Yeah, no, it's. I feel like that same eighteen percent went in from 2010 to 2020 is now from 2020 to 2022. We're about 15 percent. We're right there in a, in just a couple year period. And if you can't raise your fees, and now your hygienist is coming to you saying, "Hey, I need a raise. Everything's more expensive out oh, there." If you're not if you're not getting a staff asking you for a raise, or then and, and if you haven't given your your team a seven and a half percent, eight and a half percent fee increase because you can't, that also is not going to end well for you. And you wonder why you have this revolving door. Not that money is everything. They want to have, be appreciated. They want to have be valued. And they want and, to feel and like once family. you lose them, best of luck finding a new one right now. That's right. And, and so, and people will leave good offices. That That's not to say that they move, they get married, they, they transition, they decide to make career changes and such, but you don't have, you don't have to put yourself in that because out of fear or that you think there isn't another way. We deal a lot with helping dentists and team members with approval addiction. I'm sure you've heard of that phrase. And it just means I'm afraid it's fear of rejection. It's, you know, fear of being shot as the messenger. It's, it's not being confident and it comes across. And so we work on that with our clients. We try to show them how to get out of that and give them examples. And, and I love doing what you do, interviewing dentists that we've helped get through right. this because they can, their testimony to other dentists who are stuck on this side going, I'm afraid to get there. And it's doable. We helped a client resign from probably six plans over a one year period, three and three. Right. The only thing he's participating with is Delta. He went from PPO to Premier with Delta because he was in prior to 2012 with Delta. And not only did he, he's in uh, Central Valley, California, coast side of, of Central California, south of San Francisco. It's really Southern California, I should say. And he went from, you know, 900,000 flirting with a million to now 1.2 no change in hours, no change in staff or anything. That's production and collections. And we look for a 98% collection rate and he did it. Wow. You know? So now he's bought a second practice. He bought a second location. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's doable. That's fantastic. So it's doable. And it doesn't mean it has to be for everybody. That's not everybody's vision, but if that's your vision, it's absolutely doable. Yeah. So as we wind down, I'm going to ask you the question, the two questions I ask every guest. Uh, the first question is what advice would you give to a brand new dental school graduate? Okay, so I speak at dental schools, and I'm so glad. I'm so glad you brought that up. I, I had a student say to me, and of course it's virtual while I'm speaking to them. They're seniors, and he's like, "I don't understand. How can you? How can you operate without being in network? Like, because we have medical influencing us so much, medical insurance influencing us so much. The brain says, "Oh, they oh, sponsor everything at the dental school or the medical. Their school. names on the board, right? Their names on the wall. We think, and I, and this is part of the conversation that we have patients sometimes too. Is it's not like medical insurance. Dental insurance is not like medical insurance. You can be at a network and get the check. They will pay you your fee. Maybe there's a copay, but what's twenty to forty dollars for your patient every six months? So I would tell someone in dental school: do everything in your power to find a practice, find a mentor, a coach, but find a practice that is a vast majority of the practice is out of network. Maybe Delta, and, and I can I can talk about that on different time timing, but. You know, anybody after 2012 has to be PPO with Delta. So what we're seeing all the time now is dad's premier with, you know, dentist with, with it. And now here comes son, the new dentist coming in, can't be premier, has to be PPO. And dad's going, wait, this isn't working. This isn't working. And so both of them are out. Both are going out. And because you have great relationship and rapport with your patients, you have to have good verbal skills and systems. The patients are okay with it. And, and. Uh, we're seeing more and more communities as a whole. This dentist resigns from Delta. Then this dentist resigns from Delta. Then this dentist, it just keeps going and going. It's a domino effect. And I think it's part of fighting the good fight. It's, it's not healthy to lose leverage in your business. It is a business at the end of the day, right? It is. It absolutely is. So I'm a big reader. I would imagine you probably are too. What books do you recommend or what, what have you read recently that you say this is something people should consider? The books I read are not dental. I'm John Maxwell certified coach. So I read all the John Maxwell books. I just Which read every dentist should read those books because they, they all they're all practice. Amazing. Yeah. So I just, these are the books, two books I just finished <laughs> emotional intelligence and strength finder. Great books. Now I'm, yeah. So, and I think the reason being is emotional intelligence is how you communicate with people, how you carry yourself. 
right? It's being able to read the room and having confidence and having this conversation. So I think that is actually a great book to do with your team. And the Strength Finder is amazing to do with your team too, because you understand what each person's strengths are. So I love that. I just read uh, James Clear, Atomic Habits. Oh, that's a phenomenal one. A great book. Yeah. And, and I usually take a picture and put it on my social media page uh, as I read them. So well, <laughs> I, speaking of social media, how can people get in touch with you if they want to, if they want to learn more, if they want to connect with well, you, if they want to, if they want to see if they should work with you, what, what are, what are yeah. all the ways that you can do it? And also talk about your podcast too. Yeah. So dental all-stars podcast, Alex uh, and Heather Nottingham, we just, you know, we love to help dentists. That's our passion. We love to create value in others that they can create value in patients. And so uh, you can email Heather at allstardentalacademy.com, Alex at allstardentalacademy.com, Eric at allstardentalacademy.com. Just go look, peruse, see it. Uh, Alex is amazing at, uh, you guys all heard them already on the podcast. He's amazing at, as a coach, as a leader. Heather's amazing at customer service and training. And so her and I really work with clients. Uh, We have a team of coaches that will work with you on this that Heather and I have have trained and make sure that at a certain level, they're, they're all-star certified and gosh, we just, and and Robin is amazing. She's a, she's our coach uh, on the HR side of all-star and she'll help you find team members. That's, that's her real niche. She understands the HR side of it. She's systems, she's consulting. She will help you as well. So we have a phenomenal team at all-star and that's just the leadership side of it. And you can just reach out to us, go to the website, check it out. And we're happy to, to help you in any way we can, just even if it's a question, happy to answer. That's great. That's so good. Uh, so many times people just, you have to pay to talk to them, but for you guys to be that open is really, really great. Yeah. This is a long-term thing for us. I mean, I've had clients for 15 years and not because they're slow learners, it's because there's value and relationship and we're constantly learning and growing and getting better. And they love the KPI coaching. They love the ability to know that their practice is healthy. And if something's off, we go back to it and we work on it. That's so good. That's so good. Well, Eric, this has been a really insightful conversation. I really appreciate your time, especially since you're on the West coast and it's early over there when we record this. (laughs) So thanks so much for your time. Anytime. I'd love to do it again. Anytime, Ross. Thank you. Yeah. All right, guys, you've been listening to the financial flossing podcast with Ross Brandon. Tune in next time for our next episode. This has been another episode of financial flossing with Ross Brandon guiding dental professionals to a brighter future. If you liked what you heard, consider subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts. For more on Ross Brannan, visit rossbrannan.com. Registered representative and financial advisor of Park Avenue Securities, LLC, PAS, OSJ, 3664 Coolidge Court, Tallahassee, Florida, 32311, 850-562-9075. Securities products and advisory services offered through PAS, member FINRA SIPC. Financial representative of the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America, Guardian, New York, New York. PAS is a wholly owned subsidiary of Guardian. North Florida Financial is not an affiliate or subsidiary of PAS or Guardian. California Insurance License Number 0L10073. Arkansas Insurance License Number 1613932. 2021 1195.35. Expires 423. That last part can also say 2021 1195.35. Expiration, April 2023. This podcast is for informational purposes only. Guest speakers and their firms are not affiliated with or endorsed by PAS, Guardian, or North Florida Financial, and opinions stated are their own. Ross is a registered representative and financial advisor of Park Avenue Securities, LLC, PAS, OSJ, 3664, Coolidge Court, Tallahassee, Florida, 32311, 850-562-9075. Securities products and advisory services offered through PAS member FINRA SIPC, financial representative of the Guardian Life Insurance Company of America, Guardian, New York, New York. PAS is a wholly owned subsidiary of Guardian. North Florida Financial is not an affiliate or subsidiary of PAS or Guardian. Arkansas Insurance License Number 16139032, California Insurance License Number 0L10073, 2022 137047, expiration 424.